of influence, sorry, not wisdom, influence, and today I want to just uh, speak on something that the Lord put in my heart, actually it was just a confirmation about what the man of God talked about this morning, which uh, really solidified my confidence in this matter, and I wish to bring it to you, because I believe that's what God wants us to, to have, amen. Now. I want to talk about designing and dealing with negative influence. Designing and dealing with the negative influence. Uh, designing and dealing with negative influence. But this time is not a negative influence that comes from negative people. No. Negative influence that come from people you trust, men of God. Ah, yes. I told you the issue of influence is so deep. Some of us have, we have dealt in error. We have introduced error because we did not design. Because if this matter or this issue was spoken to or was spoken through a man of God, to you it was a go-ahead. And you don't know that the enemy also can use any person that he wants. If only that person who just want out of alignment is enough to be fed and to be used by the enemy. And I will show you a good example from the scriptures so that you can be able to discern. Because today, we said influence is what is a God-given capacity that God gave you so that you may in touch, you know, infect and change the course of things, people's lives, things, and also places. The fact that you're a man, it means that you are subject to influence. Influence in Kwakiswahili ni ushawishi. Kila mtu hapa ni product ya ushawishi. If I want to know the kind of influence that is over your life, I just look at the way your life is. I will know. Are we together? So we said also that the business of the kingdom, because God happens to run a kingdom, and he can only achieve establishment of his kingdom by influence. So what he does is, he's calling people to himself, influencing them, giving them the grace, giving them every spiritual capital they need to go and establish the same, same things that he has taught them. So he's in the business of advancing his kingdom. Mungu ha establish a... Uh, what we say, uh, empires. No. He is running a kingdom. We will not understand kingdom until we understand influence. If you say that you are the salt of the world, you will understand that salt comes along with so many benefits. And we saw them last week. One of them is it brings taste, flavor. Everybody has a certain unique flavor in their life. And that flavor is what defines your uniqueness. We are not the same. There are things you've gone through that God wants you to mentor others on. Hallelujah. We say that if you see a man's life rise to the better, it means that he is influenced by something better. But if you see a man's life working, you know, melting down into us, it means that there is a negative influence. Now, I want to talk about the negative influence that does not just come or will never come because uh, according to you and me, we may think that influence, negative influence comes from negative people. But today I want to talk about negative influence that is unknown to you and because of the confidence you have with some, of the, some, of, some people that claim to be mentors to you, 
men of God, servants of God, especially. And because of that, you are, you will, because of the lack of your discernment, you are likely to enter into error. It's like a, it's like a satanic setup, but he's using it through servants of God. So let's look at an example. Let's go to First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13 verse 1. First Kings chapter 13. Please give me New King James. Hallelujah. Uh, once upon a time, uh, I met this man of God that I, happens to visit our local church some years back. A church that I used to serve in. And I happened to be part of the protocol team. So this man of God came and we saw a mighty move of God through his ministry. But after he finished and uh, as we were escorting him back to the hotel, he gave me a hundred shillings note. And he told me, this one, don't use it. Don't ever use it. Even if you're broke, don't use it. Let it stay in your wallet. You understand? So it will be able to, what, to attract more <laughs> financial or more finances. So unknown, unknown to me, because it came from a man of God that I saw moving in the power of God. People getting ill. It was easy for me to be influenced and believe. So I fell victim. I asked Kumoja, Nilikuwa uh, maali. So all I had was that 100 shillings. Because it was like a souvenir inside my, my wallet. So what I did, ah, and I realized, okay, now that I used it, nothing happened to me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's look at a good example here of a good portrait that the scripture is bringing forth to us. And I want us to understand, we will read it till the end. All right? All right. Let's read. First Kings chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jeroboam happened to be the king. And this man of God was sent to him. Verse 2. Yes. Uh-huh. And said, O oh, altar. Yes. That says the law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. So that was the judgment the man of God brought to this king. So the man of God was sent to this king and they met at the altar because this king happened to undertake some priesthood business. So wakatalifika hapo, judgment ya mungu kakuja kupitia yule mtumishu wa mungu. So verse 3, endalea, verse 3. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart and ashes on it be poured out. So the man of God spoke. And there was, there had to be, he, he demanded the need for signs. That it is true he was sent by God. Because many times people disbelieve. So, this, this, this shows us the kind of ministry he had. Very powerful ministry. A man that can secure the voice of God in those days was a man that would walk in line because it is only when the Holy Ghost came upon you, that's when you could speak the things of God. Alright? Verse 4. So it came to pass. When King Jeroboam had the sense of this man of God who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out. Uh -huh. Arrest him! How can this man speak like this on this altar? A king. Arrest him! What happened? Then, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. The same hand that he stretched to beat the man of God withered. So he was so angered, he was so devastated, that he thought that this man is just a common man. Verse 5. And the altar was split. Yes. 
Uh huh. The same way the man of God spoke, that's what it. That's what happened. The sign that was given, that's to, uh, that's that's the thing that took place. Verse six. Uh huh. And the king answered and said to the man of God, "Please entreat." Please, man of God, pray for me. Paul and Joe, ni yombe. Si alikuwa nda kupiga mtu mshamu mungu. Akakauki, mkona yako kakauka. Kana mbia zamu mshamu Paul. Ni yombe bana ni kai vizuri. Ni yombe ni pon. And what happened? And he prayed for me that my hand may be restored to me. So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and became as before. Verse seven. Stay with me. Verse seven. Then the king said to the man of God, "Come home with me, refresh yourself, and I will give you." In other words, come. I've seen the hand of God over your life. I want come. I have a reward for you. Now that you prayed for me and Kapona, Kuja. Now that shows it reveals the attitude the kings had towards men of God. They thought that every man of God was easy to be bought. Because you saw him move in signs and wonders. Ukaona, ah, who you? I need him around me. So let me give him, let me decide to reward his life. Unfortunately, that's what happens today. People are operating outside jurisdiction because of the favors introduced to them. It's very easy. And yet, this man of God received an instruction from the Lord. Proceed. Verse 8. But... But the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half of your house, I would not go, I would not take it. Uh -huh. Nor would I eat bread, nor drink water in this place. Why? Verse 9. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, not every offering offered to you is pickable. Because God gave him a specific instruction. Let me say this, children of God. Your encounter with God is superior than what a man of God will tell you. That what God told you, Brenda, is superior than what the mightiest prophet will ever tell you. Because it is the only place of that word your security is established. Your future is safe. Your life is guarded. But you know what? The devil knows. Ah, yes. Ah. Ome ambua vizuri. Muka mekwambia. Ingia katika siku zaba za kufunga na kuomba. Lafu na kujo na upata na pastor Levi. Sana kambia. My word is final. And the Lord has done it, my daughter. Eat and drink. You see, I'm saying these are negative influence that may come from men you trust. Which many believers have not yet survived. How would I survive? How would I survive? I love Papa. I love Mama. What Mama says is what? What did the Lord tell you? What did he tell you? That word is superior than what Papa and Mama will tell you. Uh -huh. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came. So he succeeded successfully. Ali hepa king, king akamwachili akasema ni aje mimi sitachua chochote wacha niende. Watu misho ngapi? Watu misho ngapi hawawezi kuacha. Ungekua ni wewe Tom. Kwa kweli, si ungechukua reward. Lakini this man had to refer to the word that God told him. Don't pick anything. Don't drink anything. Don't eat anything. So, men of God, we are under strong marching orders. We can't compromise. So, if I come to your place and you see me not eating, say, go by, ah. Love that instruction. Verse 11. Aha. Uh -huh. Now what? Underline the word old prophet. Old what? Old what? That dwelt in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works of the man of God had done that day in Bethel. Because they were there. When the man of God was being, was, 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 uh, uh, was in that meeting with the king, these sons happened to be there. The sons of the old. It 
They told the man of God, the old prophet, what had come to pass, what had happened in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoke to the king. So, the old prophet, Maneno. What happened to the old prophet? Verse 12. And their father said to them, which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God had gone or had went, uh, went. who came from what? Judah. Verse 13. Yes. Prepare the donkey for me. Yes. They rode on it. old prophet Proceed. Verse 14. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Are you the man that came from Judah? And he said what? I am. Ah, verse 15. Yes. Come home with me. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah. Yes. Proceed. Verse 17. Aha. Uh -huh. eh. Yes. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. What happened? Verse 18. He said to him, I too, I am what? How could say I am an old prophet? That part he hid from this young man that was hearing accurately from the Lord. I too, I am a prophet the way you are. We have so many old prophets, men that God stopped using long time ago. But yet, because of their impact of their ministries, you, you are still holding on. And yet God, so this man have the capacity to fight any new move of God. Any new move of God. Any new move. This was an old move that wanted to swallow the new move. Yes. Come on, I'm an old prophet. I am a prophet as you are. Look at this. Uh -huh. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with me, or bring him back with you to your house. That he may do what? That he may do what? And what happened? Aha, uh -huh. what was. What? He was lying to him. Many have not been able to discern and deal appropriately with negative influence. In the right time. Not necessarily because they don't have the ability or capacity to design. They have. But because of the way and the mode through which the influence comes. You can't design. Influence is a powerful weapon that God and the devil are both using. This is a very needful teaching. Especially in this time and, uh, and season. Very needful. Very important. One of the reasons why we need to be very careful. It's because negative influence can come from people, things that have had a positive impact in your life. And some of them sustain a good track, track record according to you. Please understand. Please understand this. What we call legacy in simple terms is influence. Now, so, what happened verse 19? Verse 19. To some and go up and one, two, three, go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Eh. -huh. Proceed. Mm. Yes. Uh-huh. Look at this. Look at this. What an irony. What an irony. What an irony. I need to illustrate something. Pastor Joel, come. Yes. Tom, come. I'm just using it as an example. This one is an old prophet. This is a new prophet. The one that God has just sent. But because he knows something that happens in the land, which happened to be the same thing that disqualified him, 
That's what he was trying to introduce to disqualify the ministry of this man. But this new man could not discern. And he came to him in the name of the Lord. Akamambia, I'm also a prophet. And he has commanded me. An angel came to me and said, drink and eat. Was that true? No. He came to you in the name of the Lord because he knows anything that touches on Jesus to you is a weakness. Is your weakness. You say, ah, this is a man sent from God. This is it. He knew who you. Unknown to the young man, unknown to him that that was something that was dressing up to disqualify him and also to cut him short, to cut him off. So, this old man deceives this new prophet. But there is something that happened here. Wakati huya livunja hiyo commandment, mungu wakumzugumuzia yeye. Alikuja kazungumuzia hu? Niulize swali moja. Nini ni mungu wanaangalia? Bona kuzungumuzia huyu from the word going to Bethel, aungena king. Bona litumia huyu. Yes. It is simple, the new move. The worst place to be, it is to be where God was. Where God was. It is the worst and most dangerous place to be. This man was in the whole place. And because there is something new God has as an agenda in the land of Bethel, he sends a new functionary. But the same same people happen to trick people that God has sent. People that pay, pay the price. Now, let me speak in parables. If you exalt the words of men, more than how you exalt the word that God told you, you'll soon enter into error. 